on the phone with us this morning, big first district congressman Tracy Mann, and he also has uh, another congressman he's showing around the big first as well. Good morning, Tracy. Hey, good morning, Nick. Good to be on with you guys this morning. All right. And I know that you have the ranking member of House Ag Committee, uh, G.T. Thompson from Pennsylvania in Kansas this week as well. So what are you planning on showing Congressman Thompson? Well, uh, you know, we're delighted to have Congressman Thompson uh, in our district. He's the top Republican on the House Ag Committee, uh, which matters a lot for us advocating in in D.C. Also, if Republicans win the majority, he'll then have the gavel of the House Ag Committee when we do the Farm Bill next year. So uh, on speaker funding here in Finney County, we're going to tour a a feed yard this morning, tour a packing plant, uh, tour an active oil well, tour a farm. And uh, do a whole bunch of stuff around Finney County, and then we'll be in K-State and, and Manhattan touring in Bath and other things tomorrow afternoon. All right. Well, it sounds like that uh, the goal here, as always, and it has been for the Big First for quite some time, although there was a brief period where the Big First representative was not on the Agriculture Committee, but I'm not going to go back into ancient history, relatively speaking. Uh, the goal is to be sure that the interests of agriculture in kansas are brought to the table when you write a farm bill right uh yeah that's exactly right hey hey nick good morning it's congressman gt just uh really proud to be here with uh tracy man you know uh the uh america yeah it's not just about how important agriculture is and obviously the big one here but it's how important the big one is to american agriculture with everything that's produced here and uh just uh really pleased to be here this morning and really pleased to be with a gentleman that just uh friend and a colleague that does such a great job on the agriculture committee he is at the table working on policy uh work with a vision too of uh, you know what's over what are the issues today and what what are the needs for um Kansas agriculture, but quite frankly, American agriculture over the horizon as well. Well, forgive me, um, with how many districts there are in Pennsylvania, uh, what part of Pennsylvania do you represent, Congressman? Well, right now, uh, uh, Pennsylvania 15th Congressional District, there are currently 18 congressional seats, and I represent 24% of the land mass of Pennsylvania. Agriculture is our number one industry in Pennsylvania. Uh, the, uh, the districts, we are going to lose a seat, so... My uh, my district will still be Pennsylvania 15, but I'm going to go from a quarter of the land mass, uh, one third of the state of Pennsylvania, with the uh, uh, with a successful reelect and uh, come January. Wow, that's a that's a big patch of land. Uh, again, forgive me. I'm maybe these are just simple questions, but what do they grow out in Pennsylvania that that you need to pay attention to? Well, uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm Pennsylvania. Uh, our number one industry is ag. Our biggest commodity is dairy, uh, but we have some of the really the most highly valued hardwoods anywhere in the world. Uh, proud that that's in my congressional district. Mostly cherry is uh, the species that's so so in demand and and valued uh, at, a, at a really good price. But we there's uh, but we have um, corn, soybeans, uh, some wheat. Uh, we have get up around the Great Lakes. We've got some. Some great grapes. You get down the southern part. We've got some orchards. We we're actually helping Georgia out earlier this year. Was sending down some Pennsylvania peaches to the packing houses in Georgia because they were struggling for different reasons. Uh, apples. Uh, we have uh, hogs and um, cattle, uh, poultry. Now, not to the scope and size, obviously, we're going to see today, uh, and that's based mostly on the the geography of Pennsylvania. Uh, but it's. Uh, it's, it's pretty varied in terms of, well, and I, I can't leave out, uh, we're the number one producers in Pennsylvania of mushrooms. Ah, there you go. <laughs> so if you, li- if you like fungus, uh, most of that's coming from Pennsylvania. Well, it sounds like you've got uh, you've got everything for a great wood-fired pizza there. Get, to, um, get, get some cherry wood and some mushrooms and, 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 and everything going on in that regard. So, again, our you thanks... Go we ahead. Got the cheese from those cows. We got the cheese from those cows as well. Exactly. Uh, all good. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, Tracy, turning back to you for just a second, uh, the the thing that ag producers need to know about, I guess, with regard to this conflict in Ukraine, is um, that's going to have a big time effect on commodity prices. It already is. Um, what are you seeing with regard to that, and what are you hearing in Washington about the long term effects of that? 
Yeah, well, it's all playing out right now. Uh, GT and I actually had a pretty good briefing from a couple of different folks last week on this very issue. Remember that Ukraine has around 40 million people, but they feed 400 million people. And so when you've got almost a third of the wheat grown in the world in Russia and also in Ukraine and then also in Russia, you know, big, big question becomes what does production look like for them? How does production level dip? The concern is that, you know, that that would destabilize a lot of the countries that they feed, a lot of those countries in the Middle East, um, Egypt, kind of North Africa. So the ripples effect, we don't know yet. It, it's imperative that we support Ukraine, that we stand to Ukrainian people for their freedom. Also, that they're able to get seeds in the ground here right now as their uh, spring planting is about to start. Uh, very important for, for agriculture. Uh, but, you know, American agriculture producers will have to step up and produce more. Uh, you know, something that, that we've done for a long time is stepping up when need be, and, and I'm excited to see it. Where are we with NBAF? How close to built and rolling is it? Well, you know, it's mostly built. There's a project like that. There's a long punch list, a lot of final items to do. Um, should start to be operational in the next um, year or so. You know, it's got to be, construction got to be completed, and then it has to be commissioned, and then it has to be tested, and then a move has to happen. So for the final move to occur, we're still um, a ways away from that, but we're closing in on it, and that's going to be very exciting for the state. Well, and I know you haven't toured yet, Congressman Thompson, but... How important do you feel that uh, the security provided by having uh, the ability to test for these pathogens in in the central part of the country is? That's incredibly important. When you um, when you look at uh, just how important the question is, just how important is food security, and and it's immense. I mean, without food security, you you don't have national security, certainly don't have economic security as well. And so having the ability with these pathogens that, um, you know, we, uh, where we see, you know, uh, uh, their, their presence, uh, some of that uh, with poultry uh, in the mid-Atlantic area it's, of, the, of the country, it's, you know, we're dealing with that now. We, uh, uh, the African swine is in uh, the Western Hemisphere in the Dominican Republic. And so, you know, uh, the, the ability to be able to have the, the, the laboratories, the biosecurity resources to, is incredibly important for food security going forward. Okay. Congressman Mann, the, it, the thing for Kansans to know is that Kansas and the Big First, which stretches all the way up to Manhattan, uh, is, an, is a central point for this safety and and you forget or at least i do um when i sit down to the dinner table just how important it is to have all of the uh the assurances that our food is safe and ready to go until you see conflict like we had in the, have we had in the Ukraine and Russia, where now um, not only do they have to be concerned for their life right now, but also for the long-term uh, food security in that part of the world. And with international commodity markets, everything gets affected, like we talked about earlier on. Um, from your perspective, uh, with the U.S. Department of Agriculture taking over the NBAF project from Department of Homeland Security. Do you still feel confident that the USDA is going to be able to use this new facility to continue to keep our food safe going forward? Yeah, absolutely. And NBAF is a big portion of, of the threats currently, but the future threats, you know, heading into the, the remainder of this century. I think you have to remember that food, you know, security is also national security. And it's also about freedom, Nick. Uh, you know, we are the free country that we are in large part, I would argue, because we have never had to rely on another country for our food. And, and that's incredibly important that we maximize production here, that we have the right policies in place, and also uh, that we make sure that that food is secure. And that's why things like NBAF are incredibly important. I tell people that, um, you know, the CDC is to humans, um, which is based in downtown Atlanta, what is what NBAF is to animals. Uh, in many ways, and so to have that project um, in Kansas, kind of right in the middle of cow country, is, is really important um, for the food security, not only of our country, but of the world. Well, and as things go forward with regard to 
figuring out exactly what impact the conflict in Ukraine is going to have on markets and on agriculture. Uh, That's going to be really important. One other thing to touch on real quickly before we get off of here, because I know you guys have an 8 o'clock appointment, is uh, the fact that at least as far as I know right now, the the USDA lunch program that was related to COVID, where um, all the kids in schools got free lunches, I think that's going to end. Um, what do we know about uh, about how to continue to uh, to get these commodities to schools going forward, even if this program sunsets because COVID isn't as much of a threat as it once was? Well, that's something that we um, – and that that's really – a big part of what we're doing today, uh, these next couple of days here in Kansas, is bringing the voices of uh, Kansas agriculture to the table for the 2023 Farm Bill. And that includes the nutrition title. And so we, um, well, I will say we're way behind. Uh, unfortunately, we're in the minority. I don't, I don't have the gavel. Uh, and so we don't set the schedule. Uh, you know, when we did the 2018 Farm Bill, which included a significant amount of oversight on the nutrition title, let alone uh, commodity title, conservation, uh, the whole thing. We we did over 130 different hearings and listening sessions, Nick. And so far, we've uh, technically done four in preparing for the next Farm Bill. It's very frustrating, uh, quite frankly, because the only re- way we get the Farm Bill right is when, when, we, when we really bring the voices of American agriculture to the table. And that includes the nutrition title that you talked about. We, we have not had hearings where we've had oversight. We've heard from USDA, why did the secretary discontinue the farm, the family food boxes? You know, tell us about the impact of, uh, you know, some of the, uh, uh, the waivers and the flexibility that with, that we put in a 2018 farm bill that was really helpful in, in making sure American families during a time of COVID, during a time of that plague, get access to the nutrition that they needed. So uh, that's that's what we need, first of all. We, we really need to have USDA before the committee so we can ask the tough questions and they can share the relevant information. And then, the, then as far as I'm concerned, it's Congress. Uh, that will make the decisions. That's the way it's supposed to work. And those decisions have been executed and administered by the administration. All right. And I hate to swing to politics, and I know we're out of time, Tracy, but uh, the hope, at least from your perspective, is that you're actually hosting the eventual chair of the committee, right? So do, do you expect it to swing back to Republican control in 2023? You know, there's no crystal ball. Certainly um, are hoping, absolutely hoping that, expecting that. Um, we have a lot of work in front of us. If the election were today, I uh, feel pretty confident that we would win the majority, and, and GT here would have the gavel of the House Ag Committee. But as we all know, the election uh, here is not till November, so we will see. So I would call it likely, uh, but not certain. Kind of like the rain forecast here in, in southwest Kansas. Today. Oh, hey, yeah, no, no kidding about that. Thank you both, uh, Congressman, for your time. Thank you so much, Congressman Thompson, for being so generous to be on with us this morning. And thank you again, Tracy. You're always so good with your time. Appreciate it from you both. Right, okay. Thanks, Nick. Thank you so much.